Hi, and welcome to Dishcraft. My name is Cassie, and I'm your host. And today we are going to be looking through this book called A Year of Dishcloths, 52 Designed to Celebrate All Four Seasons with Everyone on Your Gift List. Um, but before we start, I want to give a big thanks to a subscriber named Bonnie, who donated to the channel by um, buying me a coffee. And I just wanted to thank her and let you guys know that every donation... Um, definitely counts. It goes back into my giveaways. It goes back into the channel. It allows me um, to purchase more books and products to review and more yarn so that I can um, show you different things you can do with yarn. So I just wanted to say a big thank you to Bonnie. And speaking of giveaways, I do have a giveaway going on right now. So you might want to pause this video and go find that so you can enter it and then come back so we can look through this book together. All right. Okay. So I got this book on Mary Maxim. And I just thought that it might be a good idea, um, like a book, a good book of ideas so that maybe we could make some dish costs together. So as I flip through this, um, take note of the ones that you like. So, and, and leave me a comment letting me know which ones you'd like me to do. Um, and also I just, you know, some of these, even though they're presented as dishcloths, it can be used as granny squares as well. So that's another thing to keep in mind when you're looking at um, motifs and, and things like that, you know. And of, of course, these can also be things that, like, for example, some of these stitches might be something that you'd make want to make a bigger project out of. So just because it says it's a dishcloth doesn't mean that you necessarily have to use the pattern only for a dishcloth. So that's another thing I wanted to say first. So this is these designs are all by a woman named Maggie Weldon. And even though I got it on Mary Maxim, it says Annie's Crochet. So I don't know if this was originally um, like um, publicized by Annie's and then it just got distributed everywhere or what. But I just wanted to give a nod to that. Okay. So in the table of contents, right here at the end, it says that there's a stitch guide in the back. So I just wanted to show you that. First, we have... Um, metric conversion charts and so that would be the difference between inches like turning inches into centimeters um, yards into meters and and that kind of thing so that's 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 helpful just for anything and then we do have a stitch guide here with some diagrams on how to make different stitches so i did want to show that to you guys first before we started flipping through the book <laughs> so the first thing in the spring collection are um is this wild rose design i really like the shape of it i think it's pretty i'm not certain if i would want to wash my dishes with that but it still is beautiful i like that and we also have lacy violets here and then we've got some tulips we've got a motif in a circle basically she made a circular dishcloth and then she went over them and embroidered these on top of that and, and added this nice border here and here's a cornflower. It would also definitely make a good granny square. Here's a passion flower, and it's it's used with um, that scrubby um, yarn there, which I think is kind of interesting. I haven't ever worked with the scrubby yarn, but I have touched it before, and I really don't like the texture, so I don't think I ever will work with it. Like, if I was to make this, I would just use regular yarn there, but I bet that that would be a really... Um, effective dishcloth with that scrubby stuff on there. See here we've got this one called Peach Delight. I really like the play with the colors. Um, I think this would make a great dishcloth but it, it also it just looks like a great granny square as well so that's what I think of when I look at that. But I do like the difference between the variegated colors and the white color and all of that. I think this looks really pretty. Okay so we have a daffodil as well and I like that that it's circular. And we have a forget-me-not. I like the shape of that. I think that's really pretty. And grandmother's flower garden. So this looks like little granny hexagons here that were all put together. I would imagine that that would probably be difficult to make, but maybe she makes it in a way that's easier than what I'm imagining. Because what I'm imagining is that she makes all of these hexagons separately and then she somehow sews them together. And I would just think that it might be a pain <laughs> to sew all of those together. So here's another, it's the same kind of idea. It's called 13 grannies in a square. So yeah, it's another kind of granny square motif, but I do like the way that she made that flower in the middle. I wouldn't mind embroidering with chains like that. I think that that's cool. 
so this one's called morning glories oh and that's a really i really like the way that she did that pattern there definitely looks like morning glory is definitely what it is again she made a circle and then she embroidered that on top of there and added um, a nice border this rose granny right here is gorgeous i would like i actually would consider making this as a granny square blanket um that's just really pretty i love the way that she goes around with this edging here it's really pretty to me i really like that one right so here's an easter bunny so i personally am not very impressed by this easter bunny um i think it looks a little weird and awkward i'm not saying that it's a bad easter bunny or anything like that i just personally would not <laughs> I wouldn't make this myself. I would, well, if I went about making Easter Bunny, I don't think I would make it like this. It looks a little bit kind of smushed. Like its ears, its ears are just like a down alongside it, but it just looks like it's part of its face. <laughs> so nothing against this Easter Bunny. It's a fine Easter Bunny. It's just not one that I personally like. <laughs> and here we have a shamrock. And um, instead of just little flowers, they, she's made little hearts around that and she's gone back and defined them by embroidering around that. Um, not certain if I would have gone ahead and embroidered around it because it's pretty clear what it is without that, but it does bring together all the different colored greens that she's used. And so far, I do want to mention that these have all been easy um, designs so far. I haven't seen one that's more difficult than that. And I just wanted to mention, you know, there are different ways of making, of, of making patterns and one of them is making a color chart anything that's made in a color chart can be used in mesh crochet and it can also be used in mosaic crochet so if you see a chart like this and you know how to do one of those then you should be able to make it pretty easily that way i mean definitely in mosaic like mosaic like for me i think mosaic crochet is easier than mesh crochet <laughs> but i think most people would probably say the opposite so we're into summer and we start out with this summer rose and it looks just like a granny square but it would definitely make a good dishcloth too um, and i'm just mentioning this because again these you, you don't have to make dishcloths out of these you can also make other things we've got these summer shells i really like the color work there i think that that's pretty we've got an intermediate um, finally here with the bayberry not that I want them to be intermediate, but I just wanted to mention that here is an intermediate level one. This sunny day. Um, now, if I was making this this sun, I would just make the circle um, and then I would make these little rays in a different color and I wouldn't bother putting in a happy face. Um, and then obviously I wouldn't have to make a circle, but this is a fine way to make a sun, <laughs> definitely. And I guess that the texture that's created by doing that also helps it if, if its purpose is to be a dishcloth, you know. So we have this one called Funfetti over here and Tropical Breeze over here. And it looks like these are just two squares that are used with variegated yarn to create this nice pattern. I would imagine that either one of these particular patterns would make a good blanket too. Um, because yeah, it's basically, you could just kind of think of it as a small, as a blanket with a border, you know? Um, so you could make these on a much bigger level and get the same effect. So yeah. I, I really like this one. It looks like it's got some front post double crochets in there. I'm not certain what's going on here. Um, yeah, not certain what's going on here exactly, but it looks like it's a shell and post stitch is what I would call that. So here we've got an orange slice and she did the same thing as making a circle. And then what she did here is instead of embroidering over it, it looks like she went back in there and she chained um, with each one of these and then went around that with the same color with that white, which I think is a good way to do that. We've got a popcorn <laughs> with the popcorn here. Um, I'm not certain I would actually have gone back and put that popcorn on top of that, but that's definitely an interesting way of doing that. I bet those bobble stitches would make really good for scrubbing too. We've got this retro ripple, which I would imagine is part of that 4th of July. And then we have a flag, which is another nod to the 4th of July for those of us who live in the United States. 
and here is a sunflower in a circle. I really like this. And and I just want to point out that it's again, it's the same thing. She just made a circle and then and then she embroidered these little petals on top of it just so you know how it's made. Um it looks like she she um I don't know if she ended up making the whole circle and then went back and added these or if she added these and then continued the whole circle around that, but it looks like these this little yellow part right here was part of another circle and then she went over it so yeah i love the colors of sunflowers that brown and yellow I mean, here's another sunflower scrubby there and she definitely used front post double crochets in between each one of these petals to create some texture there and then we have some fans yeah and you know how I made that um, sunny sunshine blanket? It it looks like sunshine to me, <laughs> like the sun coming up. So I can definitely see why that's in the summer. All right, so we are into fall and we start out with this ruffled square. I personally don't see what's fall about it, but I do like it. I think it's pretty. I like the use of color in it, definitely. This next one, is really cool because I think she did a really good job of making a candy corn because that that's exactly what that looks like nobody would get confused you know nobody would who knows what candy corn is would look at this and think that maybe it was something else you know what I mean and this turkey I think that this is so cool because she, she used this variegation right here the variegated yarn and when I say that I'm just talking about yarn that changes colors a lot um she used that to make the feathers so it looks more um, more like a wild animal, <laughs> but I like that. And of course that would correspond to Thanksgiving for those of us in the U.S. And here's a pumpkin. Again, she made a circle and then she embroidered on top of it that little face. And a school bus. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is a really good apple. I think that this is, I. it would be very difficult for me if I tried to make an apple shape just from scratch. So I definitely, um, I definitely give her props for being able to do it well. Um, so it looks like what she did was that she, she made, well, you know what? I'm not certain. I'd have to read the pattern, but this is a really nice apple there. And here's a breast cancer ribbon. I think she used really nice colors in that one too. Mm, illusions. It's definitely not something I want to look at for, for much longer. But yeah, I don't think I'd want that in my kitchen. <laughs> so here's a fancy heart. And I really like this one too. I think that it's a heart shape. And that might seem like, okay, yeah, that's what it's supposed to be, Cassie. But for me, it's like in crochet, there's two things that are hard for me to find like the perfect um, shape of in, and heart is one of them. The other one is snowflakes. It's really hard for me to, to see a really good heart and a really good snowflake because the heart always ends up looking kind of weird to me or, and off center. So I think that this is a very good attempt at a heart. I think that she pulled it off. <laughs> so definitely appreciate that one and here we have a penguin and this if you look at this motif here that's like this kind of like this kind of circle up here and then the larger circle down here you'll see that coming up again later on okay we have a gingerbread house and this is all embroidered on and i would just imagine that that texture just really helps with um with uh, the scrubbing the snowman is another circle that is embellished here to make that snowman face. So here's the same pattern that was used for the um, penguin that's now being used for um, Rudolph. And I think that that's a cute one. I like the way she did the antlers there too. And this is a, is a nice snowflake. So she's really impressed me. She's impressed me twice. I love the shape of this. I love the border around it. And I think that, th I mean, this is definitely a snowflake. Like everybody looking at this would be like, agree that that's a snowflake. I don't think anybody would be confused with what that was. So I really like that one. <laughs> Here's a Santa. And it looks like his beard is made with pic Pico stitches. Um, 
and uh, it also looks like this this hat um, is a point that you can pull up to I think that's a, that's a nice way of making that too hmm that's a nice Christmas tree huh yeah I like that one too and here's a white snowflake with the pico stitches around the border yeah and then we have this Christmas wreath I think she did a really good job with that one I really like that And here is a snowman block. And again, with any kind of block color chart, you know, you can use that with mesh crochet and you can also use that with mosaic crochet. Very easy to um, figure out exactly how to, how to make that. Um, it looks like she probably, yeah, she used each one of these blocks represents a single crochet. Um, and so that's how she, she um, shows you how to make that. And so that's how you know when to, when to change colors. And here's a poinsettia. Oh, wow. That is a really good poinsettia, too. Yeah. It's really, really nice use of colors there, too. And then this is poinsettia in a square. Now, this looks more like a poinsettia to me, but I think that that's really pretty. But yeah, this looks more like a poinsettia to me, but I think I like that one better. <laughs> All right. Ooh, candy cane blocks. These, this kind of style um some some people call it it's like cabin style too like they'll use different like shapes like this in in that it really messes with my mind it it i like and it's weird because greg my partner he loves them he thinks that they look so cool but i i just can't do this kind of stuff where some people make it where you've got a, a square and then you've got a square around it as a diamond and then you put another square around it and it just kind of goes it, I just can't look at those. It, it's kind of like those those illusions that we the illusion we saw before. It's just kind of messes with my head a little bit. This holiday hexagon. I I know how to use. I know how to make this pattern. I've made it before, um, <clears throat> but this particular um, this particular one, you know, she uses variegated white and green there, and then she uses a solid color and the alternate rows. So there is some color changes there too. I think she did a good job with that. Oh, look at this Christmas lace. That is gorgeous. And it's so simple too. I love how that it's like such a simple design and yet it looks so good. I like this one. I think I'm probably going to do a tutorial on this Christmas lace around Christmas because I can't really think of a way to, um, make make this into a um summer or spring or even a fall project i will definitely do that and we have a scrubby and it looks like this actually has a scrubby scrubby in the middle of it so <laughs> it's exactly what she says it is and now we're back to the stitch guide so i hope you liked flipping through this book with me um a year of a dish class by meggie weldon and for those of you who stayed to the end, guess what? I have a second one that I'm going to be giving away. So watching till the end paid off, huh? So here's the deal. Um, I've got another one of these books. I'm going to give it away to somebody who comments on this video. And all you have to do is um, use the word... How about use the word year? I'll be looking for the word year. And um, so just use that some, somewhere in your comment. Don't say the word giveaway. Don't let on that there's a giveaway in this because this is only for people who watch to the end of my videos. And I'll pick a winner in about um, seven to 10 days from now. And whoever wins this, I'll be sending them this book. And I'll also put in some surprise yarn as well. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching my video. As always, it always helps if you like, comment, subscribe, share, and all of that great stuff. Um, I will see you soon with another video.